family and friends it's Rob the Sapper Gardener and we're just out doing some cleanup and some prep work in our micro orchard we're prepping the area where eventually we hope to put a high tunnel or a larger greenhouse but until then we're going to use them as a small food plot or mini food plots for the micro orchard so we figured we can do corn, okra, maybe we'll do some trellises to do a uh, squash once we burn holes in it to plant in. So we've got two layers of silage tarp down. And this is an idea we've seen on other people's channels. Uh, obviously uh, nothing's new under the sun, but we still need to pin the silage tarp down a little better but that'll stop anything from growing that we don't want growing or at least slow it down dramatically so we're gonna come back out put some pins in this and then uh may burn tomorrow i've got a flame burner we'll use that to put uh, small holes in it so that we can plant underneath so Took a break or I took a break from uh, working in the garden today almost looks like it's snowing with all the pollen in the air tonight today but took a break uh, drove to both of the big box stores uh, our friend Sydney at the Naked Gardeners had already warned me the cost of peat moss is more than double since the last time that I bought any, anyway, it was uh, under ten dollars. I want to say nine seventy nine or nine ninety nine. The last time I bought some, two, three, four years ago. But as we're adding over in the micro orchard and filling in some new beds, we decided to get some to just add some uh, living amendments to it, and so. We bought some and it was over $20 and that was a sticker shock for the sapper, but yeah, we got a couple of bags anyway. And we're going to try to grow uh, more stuff over there. So while I was there getting the peat moss, I also got some uh, blueberries. I actually went to, a, uh, what do we call it? The orange store first and they were actually out of peat moss. Theirs was uh, $2 cheaper than the rival store, but I drove to the rival store, which is our favorite big box garden store anyway, and uh, got two bags. But while I was in both stores, I also grabbed some blueberries. So we're going to try to take cuttings from the blueberries we have, but that's something for the future. Right now, I want to get some in ground because we're going to set up a blueberry patch also got some uh, mature lemongrass our lemongrass we started from seed so we know it'll be a while before we can harvest from that at least a, a second year so i got some mature lemongrass well, i'll show you and i was prepared for the sticker shock on that but we got uh, two different varieties of blueberries and we're going to set that up and when we do we'll bring everybody along and let you see you know kind of what the vision is we want to do something similar to uh, the allotment gardening we want to do something similar to what our friends uh, Chris and Cheryl are doing at the back to our roots channel but uh, we'll take everybody along as we do it and we'll show you a little bit of it today so we got one plot started over here. We're gonna have our blueberry hedge. We actually have two more blueberries in the greenhouse we gotta bring out. And we'll have our first hedge. And we'll see what we'll put on these two plots. These are five by about 
20. So we should be able to put a lot of uh, shade loving plants over here, just being cognizant that we also have uh, four legged predators like the rabbits, the squirrels, the uh, possums that'll come eat something. So we'll figure a way to deter those. And we added some lemongrass over here to our grape trellis and hopefully it'll do well so next video hopefully we'll have some uh, potatoes out here some corn and whatever else we're gonna grow at least in this space so in our battle with the weeds and the mint we brought in heavier duty silage tarp and we're going to be using that to smother out the weeds and hopefully prevent the mint from uh, reclaiming our garage garden area but we've got our resident superhero in this is SG on the job, so we know we're going to win this battle. One day later. So, we're back out here, and we're starting on the next section, which is going to be potatoes. And we are not a fan of monoculture, so we're going to put potatoes here but we left enough space in between to have a walkway and also to plant some other uh, vegetable varieties. Uh, we mentioned corn, okra, we'll definitely put some horseradish. I just need to go in and split some of the horseradish crowns to transplant over here. And we'll try to mix up what we do all along in here. And hopefully that'll work out well and one thing that we were hoping to avoid, which I don't think I'm gonna work fast enough to completely avoid it. Before we get everything set up out here, we'll have to do a little bit of grass cutting just to keep this manageable until we figure out what's going where and we get it in the ground. But we got a good start with the blueberry hedge. We're going to set up some of the other hedges and hopefully I can figure out a plan for over here. As fast as we cut the weeds, they start growing back. So we'll probably do some, uh, either some silage tarp or some landscape fabric again, and then maybe another layer of mulch to slow down the weeds that have uh, come up through the last layer of uh, mulch and landscape fabric. But, it's a start so just a quick update as we go along we're not trying to kill ourselves to get everything done at once uh, we do a little bit every day uh, more on the weekends like today I've got all day to spend out here working so we'll see how much of a dent we can make in it but as always this is Rob the Sapper Gardener representing Ession's Family Garden saying God bless our great country America and God bless you wherever you reside around the world and if you're building a garden boom grow it up take care sap her out